Hi guys, welcome to this video on macronutrients. This video is going to be all about the macronutrient protein, which is one of the three macronutrients that we need to include in our diet. Let's take a look. Let's just remind ourselves of the three macronutrients in the diet. They are carbohydrates, lipids, generally referred to as fats, and protein. So these are the three macronutrients because they make up the largest proportion of our diet. Now, each of these can be used for providing energy for the body. That's not necessarily their only role, and certainly for proteins, it's not their primary role, but proteins can be used to provide energy in the absence of sufficient carbohydrates and sufficient lipids or fats. So how energy dense are each of these macronutrients? So energy density is a measure of how much energy we get per gram of each of these macronutrients. So carbohydrates provide us with four calories per gram, lipids provide us with nine calories per gram, and proteins, as and when they're needed, which is relatively rare, will provide us with four calories per gram. So lipids, you can see, are the most energy dense and carbohydrates and proteins are somewhat similar. What is the role of protein in the diet? We've said already that in the absence of sufficient carbohydrate and in the absence of sufficient fat, we can use protein to um, fuel our bodies as energy, as an energy source. But that is actually not the primary role of protein. Protein has so many different roles. We're going to cover some on this slide. When we eat protein, we begin by chewing it, which breaks it down mechanically, and we pass it into the stomach and into the digestive system, and enzymes work on that protein, and acid works on that protein, and that protein is broken down. And it's broken down into its constituent parts, the, the, the building blocks of protein. And those building blocks are called amino acids. And all protein is constructed from amino acids uh, of different sorts, of different numbers, in different varieties, in different amounts, but all protein is made of amino acids. So we break down the protein into amino acids, and then those amino acids are absorbed via the duodenum into the bloodstream. So these amino acids are now in the bloodstream, and since they're now in the bloodstream, they can be taken to where they're needed. So we either transport those amino acids to make things, or, and we'll come to the or in just a moment. So what do we make from these amino acids? Well, we can make hormones. We can make antibodies as part of our immune system to fight off viruses and so on. They're made out of protein, so therefore they're made out of amino acids. Enzymes are made out of amino acids because they're kinds of proteins too. Enzymes will help speed up chemical reactions that take place in the body. Also cell structures. So for example, from a sporting point of view, when we've been to the gym and we've worked our muscles hard and we've broken those muscles down, when they're rebuilt, they're rebuilt with the amino acids that have come from the protein in our diet. So cell structures like muscle cells are also made from amino acids, not entirely, but largely. And also, as we've said already, the energy can be provided. It's, it's probably one of the um, less important roles of protein in the diet, but it's there as a backup just in case we run out of carbohydrates and or fats. So either those amino acids are transported to make those things, or if we overconsume protein and we have additional or excess amino acids from the bloodstream, those amino acids are then transported to the liver where the liver will convert those excess amino acids that we don't need, convert to ammonia. Now, ammonia in large quantities can be very damaging to our body, so we need to get rid of it. So that ammonia is then converted into urea, which goes into our urine and is then excreted. So these excess amino acids, we have no way of storing excess amino acids. The body doesn't have a storage for amino acids, rather than anything that's not used basically on a daily basis. Anything that's not used is transported to the liver, converted to ammonia, then into urea, and then we um, excrete it ultimately at the end of the day or throughout the day or whenever. So that's the role of protein in the diet. 
loads and loads of really useful things are created and made from these building blocks these amino acids that we get initially from consuming protein now all of the proteins that we require as humans can be created or synthesized from just 20 amino acids so whether that's hormones or antibodies or cell structures whatever it is all of those things can be created out of just 20 amino acids so we can make every protein that the body needs from these 20 amino acids now i'm not going to name them all because it's not particularly relevant at this level and at this moment but there are 20 amino acids that we group into two groups and the first group of those 20 amino acids are known as the essential amino acids and there are nine of them there are nine essential amino acids and i've colored those in in red they're just representative and those essential amino acids we call them essential because the body cannot make them we must consume them as we've just described about uh, digesting our food and breaking them down and and deriving those amino acids from our food we must consume these nine amino acids and now there'll, there'll be amino acids including things like tryptophan and um, leucine and so on uh, it's not important for you to know the names at this stage but there are nine of them that we must consume because our body cannot synthesize them we cannot make them from anything else however on the flip side there are 11 other amino acids that make up the 20 that our body needs and those other 11 amino acids can actually be made by our own bodies the body can synthesize these ones these other amino acids the ones that i've got on the screen in yellow they can be synthesized or created from breaking apart the nine essential amino acids so it's not essential for us to consume those 11 because we can create them it's essential for us to have them but we can create them within the body from the other nine from the nine essential amino acids so provided we have in our diet those nine essential amino acids we can therefore produce all 20 amino acids that our body then needs to produce every single kind of protein that our body requires so you may have heard of proteins described as complete and or incomplete proteins and this relates to the numbers of amino acids that are contained in each protein source so a complete protein is any protein that includes all nine of the essential amino acids so on the diagram here we've got all nine of the red spots representing that this protein source whatever it might be and we'll get into some examples in a second whatever this protein source is it's got all nine essential amino acids in it it hasn't got all 11 of the others but that doesn't really matter because we can cr we can create or we can uh, synthesize all of the others from those nine essential amino acids the ones that i've got on the screen in red so a complete protein is any source of protein i.e the food that we eat any source of protein that contains all nine essential amino acids it will contain other amino acids too but not necessarily all 20 in fact very rarely will a food have all 20 amino acids in it so a complete protein has all nine essential amino acids and therefore it's great to consume complete proteins because it means we, we're guaranteed to be able to make all 20. an incomplete protein however is any protein source that does not contain all nine essential amino acids so an incomplete protein is any source of protein that contains some but not all of the nine eaas so you can see on the diagram again we've got some of the red dots there but some of them are missing we've got three missing essential amino acids so it's still a protein source but we haven't kind of ticked all the boxes in terms of having all the essential amino acids so we describe a protein that doesn't have all nine we describe it as it being an incomplete protein now what's important to note is that you don't have to consume complete proteins in order to get all nine essential 
amino acids because what you can do is you can combine incomplete protein so for example if you can if you consume the incomplete protein that's represented on the screen here that's missing three essential amino acids you might alongside it in the same meal or in the same day consume other incomplete proteins that do have those three that are missing from this particular protein so it is possible um, to carefully combine incomplete proteins in order to source for your body all nine essential amino acids but you will need to do that on a daily basis so let's do some examples what foods contain these kinds of protein so what foods contain um, complete proteins well generally speaking these are foods like meat poultry fish eggs milk and cheese typically animal sources now interestingly soy which is not an animal source also is a complete protein and so that's very good for uh, for vegetarians for example who don't want to eat uh, meat and poultry and fish and so on and maybe even vegans who don't want to eat um, eggs and milk and cheese and so on so soy becomes very helpful for people who are vegetarian or vegan as a source a really helpful source of complete protein that's not an animal source but typically um, animal sources provide us with complete proteins incomplete proteins therefore tend to be from plant sources so that would be things like fruits vegetables lentils beans nuts tofu and so on and so although all of those do contain protein none of them contain on their own at least none of them contain all nine essential amino acids so you have to pair up or um, multiply different types of plant source plant protein in order to make sure that overall in your diet even though each individual protein is incomplete overall you're still getting all nine essential amino acids so that's particularly relevant for vegetarians and for vegans of course so that's it for this video we've talked about protein we've talked about its role in our diet and all the incredible things that it's used for we've talked about amino acids we've talked about essential amino acids and, and the 20 amino acids that are involved in our diet and where we can find them in our different food sources we've talked about complete and incomplete proteins and if you've got any remaining questions please do put them in the comments section and i would try and get back to you um, any other positive comments are really welcome as well don't forget to like the video please do subscribe and hit the notification icon so you'll get notified uh, next time something like this comes up from me other than that i hope that's been helpful enjoy the rest of your day